This is Twit. Now, many people believe that, especially for cybersecurity, if you're going to succeed in the field, you have to start out with a degree in computer science or another technical field. A couple of weeks ago, I went to the ISC Squared conference, talked to their COO, and he was very eager to disabuse that notion. And there's a very practical reason why. It turns out that the gap between the number of cybersecurity professionals we need globally and the number that we have is about 4 million individuals. And the sad fact is that even if every single student enrolled in a computer science program worldwide went into cybersecurity, we couldn't close the gap. So we have to look elsewhere. The question is, where else do we look? And for many cybersecurity pros, the answer is simple. We look to the liberal arts. Now, there are a lot of reasons for this. Most of them have to do with the characteristics of the individuals who tend to go into the liberal arts. The other thing is some of the skills, and these are things often referred to as soft skills that you tend to learn in a liberal arts degree. You know, skills like learning to pick up information, learning to communicate information, and frequently the one that some technical folks lack most heavily, the ability to listen. For example, individuals from different backgrounds tend to to bring these communication and listening skills to the table differently, and they also bring different perspectives. Those different perspectives are another reason why the cybersecurity pros have said we need people from different backgrounds. Because if everyone in IT, if everyone in cybersecurity has come from the same background, they're going to tend to look at the problem in the same way. And that leads to situations where they can miss things that come from other directions. So so what kind of degrees should we look for if we're looking to fill the ranks of cybersecurity and general IT professionals? I took a look in an article that I recently wrote at Dark Reading at six of these, in the first one was math. Um, why? Well, people who are in math tend to have a holistic view of problem solving. They tend to be able to use symbolic language to solve problems, and they tend to have a thinking process that leads to symbolic reasoning for solving those problems. Furthermore, often people who go into math love solving puzzles. And as anyone who's in cybersecurity can tell you, puzzle solving is one of those great prerequisite skills for cybersecurity. The next, business. You know, business analysts tend to take a process-oriented approach to solving problems. And that's the same sort of thing that can lead to both IT analysts and cybersecurity analyst success the process-oriented approach, and the ability to think of cybersecurity, especially in terms of the business repercussions, the business process, and the business effects. Number three might not surprise you so much. It's psychology. This is especially true when it comes to looking at things like the, um, the whole notion of social engineering. Why do people open phishing emails? Why do people click on strange URLs? Why do they insist on opening that strange attachment to their email? All of those things are the realm of the psychologist and the psychology major. Understanding how people act and why can be critical. The next one is similar sociology, but sociology tends to look at this from the group perspective rather than just the individual. So understanding how cybersecurity or IT can work within the group, how different, if you will, tribes within the organization look at these things differently 
can help in understanding both the kind of threats that can have the most impact and the way to help build defenses that employees won't try to get around. Now, the third one, or the fifth one we're up to, surprised me a little bit, philosophy. Now, I had one of the people that I talked to, uh, a woman named um, Christine Todd, who was executive director of the Commission on Enhancing National Cybersecurity under President Obama, and she said she would love it if everyone who took a program in IT, in software development, in cybersecurity, were required to take a, man, a minor in ethics and philosophy. Why? Because understanding why it's important to behave ethically, how to build a system of ethical behavior, and how to build processes around those ethical behaviors are critical. Uh, it's also worth noting that traditionally math, you know, remember back the number one thing we talked about was part of the philosophy department in the traditional liberal arts scheme. Why? Because it's all about a different way of thinking and a way of approaching problems. Now, finally, is one that was near and dear to my heart, music. You know, musicians have long been noted for the way that they can get into software development. As a matter of fact, GE, one of the early companies developing software, had a preference for hiring music majors. And Tom Garuba, who's CISO at a company called Shared Assessment, sees no gap between the skills required for being a musician and the skills required to develop software and be part of a cybersecurity team. Uh, he says whether you are a sheet music reader or someone who plays by ear, there are skills that translate well to cybersecurity, things from following a plan to thinking on your feet to being part of a team. Now, I'm going to turn to my co-host on this, and Lou, I want to go to you first. You work with people on many different teams. Have you seen people who have succeeded in technical positions without having a computer science degree? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's, um, you know, there's there's not as many of them um, than there are people who have computer science, you know, computer engineering, those types of degrees. But there are, you know, there's a lot of people out there that have them. And, you know, in fact, some of them have been some of the best managers, engineers, and or PMs I've ever worked with only because they have a more broader view uh, of of uh, of the of the market of the uh, of the industry itself um, and they bring that perspective that's a little different than just focusing on a lot of the, the computer science uh, you know the whole computer science paradigm so I, I definitely think that it, it's not a restriction um, you know we we don't uh, discriminate based off of what degree you get. Um, you know, we we want to make sure that you know anybody who's hired has the skills that we're looking for. Uh, and if they come from a history background or a, you know a theology background, a philosophy background, that doesn't mean that you're not going to have the skills that we're looking for uh, for leadership and, um, and 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 so on and so forth. So you know, this company alone here at Microsoft. Uh, in fact, I sit next to somebody uh, through this wall here who uh, doesn't come from a com computer science background, um, who their manager uh, of one of our teams, uh, engineering teams. So I, you know, I, I think that. Um, you know, it's definitely a possibility, and uh, and those are the skills that we need in, in this day and age for sure. Well, Mo, I, I want to turn to you because I know that you are in management as well. And so, from your perspective, what would you look for first? Uh, a particular college degree with a particular major, or are there individual characteristics? that you find more important? You know, I just love this topic. I think we could do a whole show on it. Um, and we, we actually, you had a, a, a bite earlier this year where we talked about just the, uh, the importance of diversity um, when you're um, filling out a team. So uh, I'm going to go out on a limb and say, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to challenge how much do we really need a degree at all anymore? 
Um, I, I can tell you as somebody who swore that my uh, tombstone was going to read, I put four kids through college. Um, and uh, my philosophy 20 years ago was come hell or high water, I was going to find a way to do that. Um, no, no kid in the family was going to end up without going to college. I am almost wondering if I may be the last generation of parents, or at least right now um, in America, that's going to uh, have that that attitude. Um, I know that when I broke into tech, and by the way, I don't have a uh, an undergraduate degree in computer science. In fact, if I had, I think that it would have actually been a detriment because at the time, um, any degree I would have gotten would have either been electrical engineering um, or it would have been computer science, which meant that I was mostly focused on being uh, a software engineer or a coder. And I know that's uh, near and dear to lose heart, but that simply would not have been me. And most of what I ended up doing in tech, there were no classes for any of that. So I, I, I don't judge a tech uh, degree or use that as a, as a, um, a, a, as a, a litmus for anything. And um, I'm going to uh, mimic something that was said earlier in the chat room. Me, um, my, the first thing I look for is critical thinking skills, and uh, because you know that's either something that is taught or learned early on. Um, I don't think that you can. I almost think it's a hardwire thing. I don't know that that's actually something that can be acquired um, if you if you manage to escape childhood. Um, without having that skill set. Um, and then the ability to work with uh, others and appreciate the differences. And and I really do love that you're talking about the fact that you can't solve um, problems that you don't understand, uh, uh, new problems that are in every evolving problems like we see with cybersecurity by just using the same hammer. Um, so I think diversity, a different way of thinking, the different backgrounds, I think all of that is is really important. Well, I have to say I'm biased in this regard uh, because my bachelor's degree is in art. Uh, I then went and did my first pass to graduate school in computer science, but I'm a big believer in liberal arts. Uh, Lou, to, to, to end this particular bite, I want to turn back to you. Lou brought up something very provocative, and it's something that, to be honest, the folks at ISC Squared did bring up, and that's the, the question of whether a bachelor's degree is really required for the bulk of positions in either software development or cybersecurity. You know, they are of the belief that, especially if someone has been through, say, the military and picked up skills there in cybersecurity, there's no reason why they shouldn't be able to go directly into an enterprise position. Um, to my, a a two-pronged question to you. First, do you agree that that could be true? And second, how would you go about convincing HR of that truth when they when it comes to putting together uh, position announcements? So I would say that the truth is that it's not required. Um, it's mainly like I think you've kind of pointed it out quite a bit is that we're looking for particular skills. We're not looking for particular degrees. If you gain those skills from the industry, that's important. If you gain the skills from by yourself, that's important. It all depends on the degree of skill. Uh, and your capabilities. And I can tell you that, you know, at least at this company, I can control, I actually control what we post for our position. So I can post out there the skills that I'm looking for. And, um, you know, and, and as long as the people who are applying have those skills, uh, we don't have to look for particular degrees and, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, in fact, a lot of positions out there, uh, no matter what the organization, not just here at Microsoft, a lot of organizations are doing this. I know Apple's doing it. I know Google's doing it. Is they're posting what they're looking for and they're willing to to go through the process of vetting the person, uh, especially if they have a good amount of experience and or have been in the industry for a while uh, and, and and want to make a change to their career. Um, and I, so I can tell you that very, very certainly that, uh, you know, People from all parts of the industry um, have been able to get jobs uh, even recently because companies, like Heather said, are starting to see the writing on the wall and they know that uh, you know just one hammer is not going to do it all, right? And one type of hammer. We need all types. We need all types of people. We need all types of th uh, critical thinkers from all different parts of the industry to be able to solve a problem from all different vectors. And I think that that's really the key here. Um, and so I would say, you know, some groups, you know, for instance, I've seen researching groups from some companies and so on and so forth that might require some particular degrees, like a doctorate in, uh, you know, neural networks or something like that. Uh, but again, there are a lot of more positions out there today that don't require that. 
Um, and they just require that you've gained some skills somewhere. And of course, it, even if you put it on your resume if, and you get to the front door, we're going to vet you, right? A company is going to vet you. They're going to they're going to take you through the interviewing process, which, which is what the whole process is supposed to be about. It's a journey to make sure that not only do you have the skills, but you're also fluent in those skills. Um, and so, um, you know, that's kind of the whole process. And I really think that the industry is definitely shifting towards that for sure.